Good evening, all of you. Um, welcome to this presentation on uh, broiler chain management. Um, first of all, I would like to introduce myself uh, briefly. My name uh, is Bettes Bronkhorst. Uh, I have been trainer on poultry management for the last four decades. I was employed by the International Training Center at Banneveld. Um, and I do have a lot of uh, experience in conducting practical training programs on poultry management um, worldwide in many countries. Recently, I did visit also some countries in West Africa, uh, like, uh, for example, uh, the Gambia. Um, the topic of this presentation is to uh, tell you something about the broiler chain, um, how poultry meat is produced uh, worldwide. And uh, this slide gives you an idea about uh, uh, part of the uh, entire production chain. So my presentation will uh, be uh, will involve uh, from the parent stock up to the processing. So in this picture, um, the, the chicks uh, are born, uh, they are raised on the pullet farm, then they will be transferred to the breeding farm. The breeding farm is producing the hatching eggs. The hatching eggs are hatched and the uh, dale chicks are transferred to the uh, broiler farm. And after a growing period of approximately five to seven weeks, the chicks are uh, transferred to the processing plant. And finally, um, they uh, are trans transferred to the distribution center being the consumers, supermarkets or for the processing. So this is part of the uh, broader uh, production chain. This chain uh, should be supported by uh, different uh, companies as well organizations. So here only the feed mill is mentioned, but of course the broader chain needs other, needs other support from other partners as well, like uh, uh, laboratories, veterinarian service, uh, education and training as well. And this is another way how uh, the broader uh, production chain can be exposed. So the breeding companies actually, yeah, they start with the pure line uh, breeding. So they do uh, select pure lines within the original breeds. And, and they are producing the GGP, being the grandparent stock. And the grandparent stock is producing the parent stock, and th that is where this presentation starts. And the parent stock is producing broilers, and consequently the processing. And finally, the poultry meat arrives at the level of the uh, consumers. Very important of the broiler chain is that the different partners in the uh, production chain do communicate with each other. So the parent stock farm should communicate with the uh, hatchery. The hatchery should communicate with the broader farms and also the other way around. That information uh, should be transmitted throughout the entire production chain in order to uh, improve the entire production chain and to improve the quality of the final product. It is obvious that each individual partner plays his uh, own role, but each partner is also dependent on uh, the other partners in the entire chain. And the, the strengths of the entire production chain depends on the weakest link within the chain. So if somewhere in the chain there is a big problem, um, it will definitely have an impact on the entire uh, production chain. Later on, I will come back to this issue. So the final objective of the entire production chain is to produce a an, an, uh, high quality product, what is safe in terms of food safety issues. And of course, we, the, we have to produce uh, this kind of, of poultry meat, of broiler meat as economic as possible. Um, the final, uh, no, not the final. One question is: Is there is there a demand for poultry meat? So here is uh, in this graph, it is shown 
uh, that um, it is predicted that for the next decades there is ample room for poultry meat to extend uh, its production. If you compare it to, uh, for example, beef production or pig production, um, poultry meat is the favorable type of protein uh, to, to produce worldwide. The advantage of poultry compared to other uh, animal protein uh, products is uh, that it is accepted by all religions um, and it is uh, growing uh, very efficient in terms of feed conversion ratio. Another question to be uh, answered is uh, where the extension of poultry uh, will take place. Um, in the, in, on this world map you see the dark places and then it is obvious that the majority of the extension of, of uh, poultry meat will take place in Asia, uh, for example in uh, India uh, and uh, China, the Middle East, and uh, fortunately you see also in Africa some uh, dark uh, areas uh, and uh, also in the area of uh, uh, the Ghana you see it is uh, red colored so there is uh, room to expand the, your uh, broader production. Um, as said before during this presentation uh, I will start with parent stock and the, um, the line within my presentation is I uh, try to follow uh, the product. So starting with parent stock, of course the parent stock, the product uh, they produ it produces, it is the uh, hatching egg. And um, at, at each level, at each part of the production chain, I will uh, discuss some of the uh, hot issues, the key issues, um, what are the key issues and how to improve. And um, the main objective of uh, parent stock, of course, is to produce the highest number of fertilized eggs. Um, the broader breeders, they will start production at uh, approximately 20, uh, at the age of 25 weeks and the production period will last 10-11 months and from this um, graph uh, you can learn that the, they will produce in this period they will produce approximately 180-85 eggs um, and if you multiply this by the hatchability uh, each parent stock will produce approximately 140 to 150 uh, day old chicks. Um, so knowing the objective um, of parent stock is um, uh, what are the key issues uh, that de determine the, the quality of the hatching eggs and finally the, the quality of the day old chick. Um, one uh, issue is the age of the parent stock. The quality of the, the hatching egg and chicken depends on the age of the parent stock. Um, the young parent stock, uh, they will produce small size eggs and that means that also the body weight of the dale chicks will be less. Uh, at the end of the production period, the quality and the fertility often will go down because the quality of the sperm of the male line is decreasing. Um, so this is good to know um, for the hatchery as well the broader farmer. Well, where my uh, hatching eggs are coming from um, is, uh, and uh, uh, what is the age of the parent stock that, depend, that determines partly the quality of the tail chicks. Um, very important is to apply a good light program for parent stock to uh, achieve the highest number of eggs as well, the egg uh, size. Um, of course, the, uh, the parent stock, they need a well-balanced feed. So if the feed is not of optimum quality, it will have a negative impact on the quality of the tail chick. Physical and biological quality of feed, so the highest quality of feed is required. And of course, uh, we have to keep the, the flock uh, healthy 
we have to prevent any any uh, diseases um, due to uh, applying an optimum uh, vaccination program. Um, it is known that, for example, some diseases uh, can be transmitted from the parent stock through the hatching eggs to the broilers. Uh, one example is, for example, is the Gumboro disease. Um, uh, if there is an infection on, on parent stock level, it can be transferred uh, via the uh, hatchery uh, until the, uh, the broilers. So, what are uh, the uh, main key issues during the parent stock uh, management? That is flock uniformity. Uh, the, um, the flock uniformity should be as high as possible. Only a uniform flock can uh, achieve the highest peak production um, and uh, a an uniform egg quality and egg size. The egg weight, the egg weight, of course, depends on the uh, age of the parent stock. Um, uh, and knowing that the weight, body weight of the Dale chicks is always about 66% of the egg weight, it is obvious that the egg weight determines the body weight of the uh, day of J. Body weight control of the male and the female, it is uh, utmost important to uh, know exactly the uh, body weight of the male and female and male line. Please check this with the uh, standards of the, of the individual breed. Uh, and uh, that includes that uh, males and, and female have to um, weigh, have to be weighed every week. Feeding strategy, uh, knowing the body weight of the both female and male lines are very important. You have to uh, adapt your feeding strategy accordingly. This uh, data and the fertility fertility management, of course, is the one of the main issues because uh, the objective is to produce fertilized eggs. So the quality, the activity, lack quality of the male line is utmost important. As well, the housing system can also have an impact on the fertility management. It should be easy for the males to meet the females. Uh, after the uh, hatching eggs are produced by the parent stock, um, we have to uh, to. Uh, handle the etching eggs as carefully as possible because this is one of the issues what determines the chick quality. So we, the objective should be to produce clean, uh, clean eggs. Uh, and that depends on the, the cleanliness of the laying nest, uh, the type of laying nest as well. The, the litter material um, is, is an important issue. Uh, the management should be focused on how to avoid floor eggs because generally floor eggs are not uh, are not used as hatching eggs. Important is that after the uh, the egg has been laid, that the temperature is going down as fast as possible. Uh, storage condition are very important where the, where the eggs are stored, and they should be stored in a well controlled climate controlled uh, environment where temperature as well the humidity can be can be controlled. Storage time definitely plays a role on the chick quality. If hatching eggs are stored too long, it will have a negative impact on the final quality of the uh, day of chicks. And of course, the, uh, the quality of the egg, meaning the, for example, the micro cracks in the eggs will have also a negative impact. So uh, all the handling of hatching eggs should be done as carefully as possible. Um, after uh, handling the, uh, the hatching eggs, the uh, eggs are uh, uh, transferred to the uh, incubator uh, and some issues uh, important, to, uh, important for the quality of the deal chicks are the uh, disinfection management, how the eggs are disinfected, um, during the hatching process, the temperature of the embryo should be checked as well, the uh, humidity as well, the ventilation, turning of the eggs are the most important uh, issues during the hatching process. Um, 
wh when the checks uh, should be pulled uh, out. Um, generally, it is recommended that um, pulling the chicks should be done when 5% of the uh, neck uh, is still uh, is still wet. That is a practical uh, condition. After hatching, um, important to check to uh, check the chick quality. Um, some issues to uh, how we could assess the chick quality are uh, we can uh, apply a visual uh, score of the uh, body uh, of the chicks. Uh, we can weigh and uh, body weight of the dale chicks and we can check also the yolk free body mass. I will come back later on. We can check the chick lengths. That is an indica indicator for the um, uh, chick quality. The yield, the, con the condition of the dale chicks and we can apply a special program, the TONA or POSCA score, what gives a general ID about the chick quality, the dale chick quality. Um, first of all, the visual uh, score. Um, of course, what, what you can see or feel uh, on the external, external uh, of, the, uh, of the chick. Of course, the color. Um, Generally, a nice yellow color is uh, is preferred. Um, it can also be uh, influenced by uh, the application of formal aldehyde uh, that gives an extra yellow color. General development. So please uh, look to the feathers, the legs, the size, the beaks and the eyes. Then uh, you can take the chicken and you can check the navel quality. Uh, the navel quality should be properly closed. The yolk absorption, yeah, uh, important that uh, the, in the last part of the hatching process, the yolk should be absorbed by the by the chicken. Um, that we can check. I will show a picture later on. The chick should be vital and alert. Um, and uh, we can see also the have a look to the to the legs if there are any wounded joints or um, the same with the with the beak. The navel quality, as said before, it should be properly closed and at the left side you see a good uh, healed uh, navel and at the right uh, side you see a navel what is still open and what can cause for uh, bacterial infection later on. Um, the legs, you can, uh, you can see different qualities of legs at the left side. And the leg should be uh, egg should be uh, clean and, and shiny, and at the right side you will see uh, a discolored and, uh, and dehydrated kind of uh, of legs, maybe caused for a lo too long transport. Um, a system to check the uh, quality um, in the Netherlands often we use the Pascal score. And uh, this is the formula how to calculate the, uh, the quality. Um, it is uh, an individual uh, check. So uh, the, each chick, for example, number one, we uh, can check the reflex of the chicken, the condition of the navel, quality of the legs, quality of the beak, as well the belly. And um, the maximum score is 10. And uh, for every problem, we deduct uh, one. So, uh, chick number one in this example has a problem with the navel, has a problem with the belly, so the total score is eight. Chick number two, no problem at all. Uh, all characteristics are, uh, are very good, so the, uh, the chicks achieve the, the maximum score of 10. And the chick number three has a problem again with the navel, also the legs are not good. And there is a problem with the beak, so the score is seven. So in this case, you can uh, add the total uh, figure, the total numbers, and uh, the average score is 8.8.7. .8 the advantage of this system is you, you do not assess only the, the general quality, but you can see also what is the main problem. And from this example, uh, you, you can learn that the main problem is uh, 
is in a navel. So this information should be transferred back to the hatchery so they know, um, okay, there was a problem in the navel, so we have to check our hatching process. Maybe there are, uh, has been a problem during the hatching. Um, as I told you at the beginning, um, one of the objective of the broiler chain is to use the highest quality of poultry meat, of uh, broiler meat. And an important aspect of uh, to, Im to improve the quality is the transfer of information among the different partners. And that is uh, why we did develop a uh, chicken passport. And in this passport, all, inf uh, all information um, has been uh, written down. And the passport is, is following the chicken from the uh, hatchery up to the broiler uh, farmer up to the processing plant. Um, and it contains information about the parent stock, uh, like age and breed, important issues, about what kind of vaccinations um, are, uh, were applied during the, the parent uh, stock period, the technical performance of the parent stock, and the mortality rate and uh, presence of the uh, previous flocks. So this is part of the information within the uh, passport. And this passport follows the chicken up to the processing plant. So all partners knows the history of the of the chicken uh, and the treatments given to the birds. Um, after uh, assessing the um, the quality of the DL chicks, the DL chicks have been uh, should be transported to the broiler farm and. Um, Often the quality of the transport has been neglected. Um, although the transport is uh, will last only three to six hours, hopefully, um, it has an important uh, impact on the uh, final uh, quality. Um, sometimes, uh, what happens generally at the arrival at the broiler farm, the uh, broiler farmer is uh, checking the quality and counts the number of dead arrivals. So that is uh, very easy to uh, to assess. But there are many other characteristics uh, what are uh, in in uh, influenced by the uh, transport, uh, and that is shown by in this uh, in this picture. Yeah, dead on arrivals, it is easy to assess. But um, if the transport uh, is not done in an optimal way, it can have a neg negative impact, impact on uh, the mortality rate during the first week uh, and lower digest, uh, digestibility. Because, for example, the yolk has not been absorbed according to the standard. Um, the immunity reduction can take place and uh, the, the daily gain the first week will, can be lower than the standard if the transport is not done in good conditions. What are uh, good conditions? The, the uh, Dale chicks themselves, they will uh, tell you, do I feel happy during the transport? Now on the left uh, slide, you see that the birds are already panting that uh, is uh, the important uh, signal that the temperature is too high. Uh, and opposite at the right, in the right slide, uh, picture, you see the chicks are huddling together and they will, they tell you uh, the environmental temperature is too cold. So we do pay a lot of attention to the uh, transport of the, um, uh, of the Dale chicks. Um, we do trans, transport the chicks from the hatchery to the um, broiler farm in well-conditioned uh, mini vents where we can uh, check the temperature as well and humidity and, and oxygen uh, level. Um, for larger uh, quantities, yeah, even uh, with uh, well-equipped uh, trucks uh, are uh, developed with the same objective. 
Um, so, by experience, Brother Farms know that uh, the last days of the hatching process, as well the transport of the dill chicks, have uh, a uh, significant impact on the growth of the brawlers during the first days. Um, this was the reason that uh, some farmers and some hatcheries, they do develop new systems to avoid uh, these problems. And one of the uh, opportunity, one of the possibilities is to uh, avoid the transport and to hatch the uh, hatching eggs uh, at uh, the brawler farm. So the brawler farm has to uh, construct a brawler and brawler house um, in which temperature and humidity can control uh, in an optimal way. So uh, at 18 days, the hatching eggs are transferred from the hatchery to the brawler farm, and um, the brawler uh, uh, and the eggs are hatched at 21 days in the brawler house. This um, now we have a couple of years' experience with this system, and it is obvious that the uh, the daily gain. The growth the first week is uh, is seven to ten percent higher. The feed conversion ratio is uh, lower. We do have less uh, mortality. Um, this system provides a better welfare for the uh, birds because there is no transport, and immediately after hatching, the the chicks have the access to water and feed, and this is one of the main reasons that the daily gain. Uh, and the growth the first week is higher compared to the traditional system. Uh, this is another picture showing how the system works. The eggs are uh, put above the litter, about approximately 40 centimeters above the litter, are hatched and the chicks, and the chicks fall down for 30, 40 centimeters and immediately they do have access to water and feed and the grow and they can start to grow. After um, now upon arrival of the day of the chicks at the farm, the house should be prepared and everything should be ready for the um, uh, arrival of the day of chicks. So the house should be uh, cleaned, has to be disinfected. The litter should be uh, installed, and utmost important, the house should be preheated to be sure that uh, upon arrival the house temperature is 32 centigrade. And also the temperature of the floor is uh, at least 29 centigrade. Um, often we, the broiler farmer is not using the entire floor surface of his uh, broiler house, but during the brooding period the chicks are uh, housed in a uh, separated area. Uh, the left picture you see a small uh, uh, brooding uh, area where the uh, chicks are confined around the heater. Um, of course, we have to place small uh, drinkers and feeders where uh, in such a way that the chicks have easy access to water and feed. Uh, in this way, we can control the brooding uh, management. And at the right side, you see a bigger unit uh, that uh, sometimes we do even give uh, feed on the floor on paper. So to uh, help the chicks to find the, the feed so that they can start consuming feed as early as possible. Um, this is, is a picture of a commercial uh, <coughs> broiler unit. Um, broilers, they are growing um, very fast so that lifetime, uh, lifetime is very short depending on the final weight. It can vary from 26, uh, 27 days up to 40 days. Um, uh, it is obvious that this is only achievable if all conditions are uh, in an optimal uh, in an optimal uh, way. This is an example of a well closed house where uh, feed and water is then is given automatically, uh, light, uh, climate, uh, meaning humidity and temperature are controlled um, automatically. Um, this is an, ex an, an insight of, uh, of a brawler house um, and it indicates that um, everything is controlled. 
the feed has been weighed, the water has been measured, the amount of water, uh, temperature uh, uh, are controlled by an uh, automatic uh, ventilation system, the lighting program is done automatically, um, so everything is controlled. This is um, not only possible in closed houses, but here are the two examples of, and this and now we are more to the, also to the um, uh, to the Ghana situation, where uh, most of the browers are kept in open site houses. Um, of course, the preparation of the house should be done in the same way, like in the right picture, um, clean litter material, um, enough feeders and drinkers are installed. So the, also this house is ready, um, ready for uh, reception of the of the chicks. Then the brothers will arrive, and already said the um, the brothers are growing uh, very fast nowadays. Uh, even it is possible to go up to to grow up to 2.5 kilogram within 40 days, uh, within uh, 40 uh, 35 to 40 days. Um, that means that the start of the uh, the brothers uh, calling the brooding period is up most up most important. Chick shoots should start to grow immediately after arrival, um, so that is um, why it is very important to prepare your brooding area and to control every day the be the behavior of the chicks, the feed intake, the water intake. You, you we should con uh, control the climate. Uh, frequently, uh, the quality of the litter. So these are the most important aspects um, to take care that the uh, uh, chicks do grow up in a very comfortable um, area. So that means uh, brooding management, we have to uh, provide a comfort area uh, and situation to, to the birds. Um, easy access to water and feed, and the climate uh, should respect the, the uh, standards, uh, temperature and humidity. Um, that is most important during the, the brooding period. Controlling the body weight is utmost important. Um, it is uh, a standard for the body weight control the first week is that at seven days of age, so after one week growing, the body weight should be at least four times the uh, body weight of the tail chicks. Um, that is in general accepted as standard. The flop uniformity. Um, th this fast uh, growth is only achievable if the flock is uniform. Uh, so we have to check the body weight uh, frequently. The climate should control uh, should be controlled uh, frequently. Uh, <clears throat> not only during daytime, but especially uh, during nighttime as well. And we have to, of course, to check the, the uh, mortality uh, of the um, of the, uh, the birds. The main objective, the main objective of during the broiler uh, growing period, is uh, to uh, achieve the highest daily gain against the lowest feed cost. So, at the end of the growing period. The most important economic data is to calculate the feed cost per kilogram life weight that indicates the profitability of your flock. Um, back to the broiler chain. Uh, already uh, explained that um, every uh, individual partner depends on uh, what happens before uh, or after. Uh, uh, this part of the production chain. Sometimes the entire production chain has to change because there is a change in demand of the products. Um, and one example is that um, uh, in the last uh, five years, more and more consumers, they do prefer a broader, what, is, uh, what grows slower and uh, what takes more time to, uh, to uh, achieve an optimal uh, final body weight. And this is in the respect of animal welfare, because they do consider the uh, traditional way of producing broiler meat as, uh, as not acceptable and uh, with a uh, negative impact on animal welfare. 
So that is why breeding companies, they do develop, they do develop a new type of broilers and we call them the slow growing broilers. Uh, and you'll see here a difference with the traditional or conventional uh, broilers. The production period is longer. Um, the body weight is approximately the same. Mortality rate is lower. The gross per bird is significant, significantly lower and the feed conversion ratio is significantly higher. That means the feed cost per kilogram grow, uh, grow um, the feed cost per kilogram meat is uh, higher. The only way to survive is to find customers who are willing to pay a higher price for such a slow growing broiler um, what uh, costs more uh, uh, money for to the farmer. Um, after a growing period, the chicks have to prepare, uh, F, uh, the, bro the chicks have to be transferred to the processing plant. So the last day we have to prepare the broilers for uh, transport. And that means we have to withdraw them from, uh, for fe from feed for a couple of hours. Depends on the, on the distance of, uh, of transport. Uh, check uh, if the feed is and drinkers. Uh, we have to use uh, uh, ventilation and temperature. We have to control it during the catching uh, period, for example. Um, we have to use clean crates and also the, the people who are catching the broilers, we should uh, provide them with, um, with disinfected uh, clothes so that there are no extra contaminations. Um, at the, in the picture it is shown a dressed chicken uh, with a lot of feed still in the crop. So the fasting, uh, fasting uh, management is not done correctly. That means a lot of feed is still in the crop. And during the process, the feed um, uh, can contaminate the uh, dressed carcass. And for example, in case of a salmonella infection, this is contamination. Uh, this is an uh, important uh, issue. Um, on the arrival of the of the processing plant, um, often the de the deaths on arrival are counted, and uh, of course the uh, the number of dead chicks arrive on the processing plant uh, is related to the the catching process as well the transport. During the catching process, often uh, bruises and fractures uh, will occur if the transport and the catching is not done carefully. That is why, for example, nowadays uh, we do place the crates inside of the house and fill the crates inside the house and then take the crates outside. In many countries, uh, I, uh, it is just it is still uh, done in a way that the catches are walking with the chicks, for example, for a long distance to the truck, which is outside, and on the truck they put the chicks in in the crate. This causes extra bruises and fractures. Rough handling uh, of the chicks can cause many bruises and, and uh, even dislocations of, of bones and discoloring as shown in this, uh, in this picture. Um, uh, other, uh, uh, another problem could be, uh, can be dislocations. Uh, you see it in the wing, it is even broken and um, the issue of animal welfare is involved here as well. So this is not a way we should we should treat uh, animals. During the transport, uh, uh, if the transport is uh, is uh, getting too long, um, you can also see the uh, the uh, discoloring of the uh, carcass. Blue carrot, many animals lack of water uh, during the transport. Uh, if the transport takes too long time, or if the chicks have to wait too long time at the level of the hatchery before killing, uh, then discolor discoloration can uh, occur. Um, the same with the uh, grey and uh, red colored uh, chicken in the second uh, picture. Um, of course, these are not suitable for human consumption. Um, the, uh, this is the the uh, same uh, the same picture. Um, 
I uh, like to uh, pay attention that here you see a an, an catcher who is carrying a, uh, approximately five chickens in one hand and definitely this cause bruises and dislocations of the hog joints. So the recommendation is to, uh, to carry um, the birds two by two. Um, to avoid the, the, the problems uh, of uh, rough handling, um, nowadays often containers are used, so this can, um, this can help to decrease the number of, um, of uh, dislocations, of discoloring, bruises of uh, the carcasses during the hatching process, and these containers are taken with a show from outside. Then the chicks are placed on, on, the, on the, uh, the containers are placed on the truck. The trucks are special designed for transporting of, uh, of chicks, uh, of, live, of live birds, um, well equipped, easy to, uh, to clean. Um, and uh, another way is uh, obvious, and maybe this also still happens in, in uh, Ghana, yeah, um, in, within these trucks. Uh, the temperature could not be controlled um, uh, or the, if they are transported during daytime the temperature will get too hot during rain the chickens are getting wet and so on and so on so this is not the optimal way to transport the, the chicks upon arrival at the processing plant it is very uh, important to give a, a rest time to the birds uh, to keep them calm and to de-stress the birds before killing, because uh, if you kill and stress birds, this has a negative impact on the quality of the meat. And uh, also carefully handling at the, at the processing uh, plant is, is important, and especially the way of, uh, of uh, putting the, the, the hands on the processing chain, it should be done carefully. Um, Transport of live birds is a very important issue um, because it, it determines uh, the quality of the, of, the, uh, of the chicks upon arrival of the processing plant and also it has an impact on the welfare of the, the, the birds during transport and that is why in the Netherlands um, uh, special trucks uh, are designed for transporting the chicks and this is controlled by the uh, government. Um, um, and uh, already told you before that also information, information, the chicken passport is going with the uh, with the chicks. That means also uh, upon the transport of chicks from the broader farm to the processing plant, the information is going with the driver, uh, and some information is even sent to the processing uh, plant prior the uh, transport. So in this picture, it is. Uh, uh, information it is written about the the, the brawler farm about the owner um, here information it is uh, written about the, the feed supplied what kind of feed is given for the birds uh, about the health station the status of the birds so all the information is going with the birds to the processing plant at arrival, uh, no, not uh, uh, during the uh, at level of the processing plant. Um, nowadays, also uh, we use the uh, we like to check the welfare of the birds, not only during transport but also during the, the uh, growing period of the brawlers. That is why at uh, level of the processing plant we do score the food lesion uh, lesions of the brawler. And at the left, top left, uh, you see uh, a healthy food soil, and uh, at the right um, bottom, you see a an, uh, an very uh, badly um, developed food soil, and that indicates um, uh, a bad litter management during the growing period. The chickens with this kind of food soils can walk. Uh, not that easy. They can. They do not have easy access to water and feed. So, generally, the welfare is uh, uh, influenced negatively. Um, 
Then the slaughtering process. In many countries, I do uh, meet this kind of uh, small size um, uh, processing uh, plants. Um, I think looking to this such a picture, it is not uh, not necessary to talk about hygiene, hygiene, uh, food safety issues, and meat quality. So the goal we have to uh, look for is that we. Uh, we will uh, process, we will slaughter and process the poultry meat in hygienic, um, hygienic and professional conditions like this. Because the final objective should be, uh, as I said in the, in the beginning of my uh, presentation, should be this to produce a healthy poultry uh, meat, broader meat for the uh, consumer. And um, in this case, on the package, you see also a code. And this code can, um, uh, will, can give you a lot of information about the history of the chicken uh, so that the consumer feels, uh, feels uh, safe to buy this feed, uh, food. An important issue uh, aspect of uh, improving the final quality of broader meat is uh, it makes necessary to install a an, uh, an cold chain um, from the processing and may slaughtering, maybe further processing and also the storage of the meat. It is important to store your products in, an, uh, in a good environment. Um, at the processing plant, it is important to cool down the, the temperature of the carcass as soon as possible to minus to be uh, level below four centigrade, because below four centigrade the bacteria uh, will not multiply. So uh, at the level of the processing plant, uh, cooling facilities are required during transport of the meat. Cooling trucks. Uh, are required and at the supermarkets uh, cooling uh, equipment is necessary as well. Um, as I told you at the start of the uh, production period um, uh, of the uh, of my presentation, the poultry world, the poultry world, it is obvious that the poultry world is changing continuously. Um, maybe due to food safety issues. In the, in the past, consumers did not pay a lot of attention to, uh, to food safety issues, but nowadays it is, it is the most important one. Um, so we have to uh, look for product quality standards, yeah? how to qualify uh, our, uh, our products. Um, we have to uh, deal with uh, consumer preferences. As I told you, nowadays we um, uh, the consumers prefer chickens who are growing slower, um, what gives more texture to the meat. So and they prefer this kind of broiler. This has an impact on all levels in the production chain. Animal welfare topics in the Western world, it is a very, uh, very important issue. And if we have to improve the animal welfare, um, it is obvious that, that uh, all partners uh, should deal with this. Um, from the parent stock level uh, during uh, the hatching process, the transport of the old chicks, the management during the, the broader period, growing period, during the transport of the from of the chicks from the broader farm to the processing plants, all partners are uh, should deal with it and should uh, take their own responsibility in an effort to improve the general welfare of the, uh, the birds. Um, so it is obvious that if there is any change uh, within the, the, the chain, all partners are dealing, are de should deal with it um, in such a way that uh, uh, you have to uh, remain competitive uh, and, uh, pro and profitable as well. So that means that we, uh, you as partner of the production chain, uh, as well, bro, uh, breeder farmer or hatchery or hatchery or broiler farmer or processing uh, plant, uh, you should know the market. You should know the preference of the consumer, not only at the moment, but um, it is also necessary to try to predict what will happen in the near future 
um, so you can um, adapt your management to fulfill to fulfill the requirements uh, of the uh, the uh, final consumer. It is obvious that this uh, uh, requires an uh, an chain approach. Uh, not only the broader farm can change the the, the welfare of the uh, or the quality of the final product. Not only the processing plant can improve the quality of the final product. You have to do it in cooperation with all the partners of uh, the pro of the production chain. And that is why the entire production chain is organized differently in, in different countries. Sometimes the uh, entire production chain is owned by uh, one company or by one owner. Sometimes some partners of the chain are cooperating together. For example, a feed, uh, the processing plant is dealing with the uh, hatchery and the broader farmers to uh, secure the uh, continuously supply of poultry meat. And sometimes all the partners are acting uh, individually and separately. So that depends on how broiler production is organized in, um, in your country. But it is obvious that um, you, to improve, you need each other. It is necessary to exchange information among the different partners. That's the only way to make progress. Um, next to this is uh, as a chain, you are also dependent on uh, poultry extension and education um, uh, in your area, in your country, uh, because you need finally the result needs on the capability of the people involved. So they should be ed educated and a good extension service can help you. Um, okay, this is um, in brief what I would like to tell you about the broader chain management, uh, about the key issues in the different uh, links of the chain, from parent stock to hatchery including transport, broiler farm and processing plant. And I hope um, some ideas, some suggestions um, are beneficial for you uh, in an effort to, um, to improve the final quality of broiler meat, because this will uh, stimulate the uh, consumers to buy your product. Thank you very much. Um, for your attention during this uh, presentation. Thank you.